This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. Broadcasting live from the True Crime Today studios to the world. To the world. This is Murder in the Morning with Tony Bruschi and Stacey Cole. From the Hidden Killers Podcast, Murder in the Morning. It's nice when you can uh, watch a case from start to finish and... You feel it finished well, that justice has been served uh, to an extent. I mean, I I, I do wish the sentence was far greater than this, but the judge pushed it to the nth, the Mm -hmm. nth degree that they possibly could. Uh, Former Las Vegas uh, official, you know who we're talking about right here, sentenced to 28 years for murder of a journalist. Robert Tellis is who we're talking about. The former Democratic official in Las Vegas, he has been sentenced to at least 28 years in Nevada State Prison for the murder of Jeff German, an investigative journalist for the Las Vegas Review Journal, who was killed in 2022. Tellus, who's 47, was convicted in August of first degree murder with the sentence enhanced by the judge due to his use of a deadly weapon and the age of his victim, who was 69 at the time of his death. Clark County District Attorney Steve Wolfson speaking after the sentencing noted the severity of the sentence saying quote the judge couldn't sentence him to any more time wolfson remarked she gave him the maximum the sentence includes a minimum term of 20 years to life extended by an additional eight years due to the aggravating factors the motive behind german's murder stemmed from a series of articles he wrote in 2022 where he exposed misconduct and turmoil within telus's office as well as a romantic relationship between Tellis and a female employee. Tellis, who at the time managed the Clark County Public Administrator Guardian Office, faced significant backlash and ultimately lost his primary election for a second term. Following German's reporting, Tellis was arrested, stripped of his position, and had his law license suspended. At trial, Tellis denied the charges, testifying that he was framed by a conspiracy involving various entities, including a real estate company, law enforcement, and DNA analysts. All of them. Oh, and he went through a lot of attorneys before settling on the one that helped him through this. Uh, He was originally actually wanting to represent himself, because that's always a great idea. Despite his claims, substantial evidence led to his conviction, including DNA matching his profile found under Gerben's fingernails and surveillance footage showing a person, we'll call it him, in an outfit resembling Tellus. Prosecutor Pamela Reckerly argued that Tellus killed Gurman because he didn't like what Mr. Gurman had written about him and felt the reporting cost him his elected, uh, his elected position. This type of violence, this sort of political violence is unacceptable and dangerous for a community as a whole, Reckerly emphasized. During the trial, evidence presented including footage of a person wearing a broad straw hat, an orange shirt, identified as the suspected killer lurking near German's residence on the day of the murder. Investigators later discovered a maroon SUV matching the description of a vehicle seen in the footage at Telus' residence, because it's his wives, as well as remnants of a straw hat and athletic shoes similar to those worn by the individual seen in the video. They were cut up around his house. Literally. How did they get there, though, Tony? Well, clearly someone decided to chop them up with a paper cutter and plant them in his home because that's that's what that's what people do. You know, a real estate agent doing all that and then, you know, syncing all that with the uh, the DNA experts and Law enforcement and all be all to get him, all to get to get Tellus. Why would anyone want to get Tellus? Maybe they were jealous of him. It was envy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after his uh, conviction, Tellus offered his condolences uh, to German's family, but continued to deny responsibility for the crime. Uh, I understand the desire to seek justice and hold somebody accountable for this. He stated in court, but I did not kill Mr. German. 
uh, TELUS defense attorney Robert Draskovich requested leniency from the court, mentioning that TELUS intends to appeal. The sentence was not surprising. Draskovich said afterward, we fulfilled our defense obligation. We parted on good terms. TELUS preserved all his rights for appeal. Draskovich subsequently withdrew from the case following the sentencing. Uh, German's death marked the only murder of a journalist in the United States in 2022, by the way, according to the Committee to Protect Journalists, uh, which has documented 17 killings of media workers in the U.S. since 1992. Uh, he was a respected journalist with 44 years of experience reporting on crimes, courts, the mob, and political corruption in Las Vegas. Wow. So there you go. Got the 28 years. Uh, and that's that's the minimum. He has to, he's up for parole at 28 years. It doesn't mean he will get parole at 28 years, though. So I, I guess my my question is, um, he never did offer up a solution. You know, um, if he didn't kill the reporter, who did? It was a conspiracy. It was a conspiracy, according to Tellus. Uh, well, but, somebody killed the guy. Yes. Well, he didn't necessarily say who, but it was a it was a professional hitman, according to Tellus. A uh, professional hitman did this because a professional hitman wears blaze orange and a straw hat and Tellus is sneakers. Um, but according to him, it was a hitman and it was a conspiracy between the the realty company, uh, the DNA and analysts, and law enforcement uh, to get. To, to get back at him, to frame him for a murder by killing the journalist. Because why would you go kill the journalist? Why would they go kill it to frame him so they could put him in jail? Because that makes a lot of sense. Go kill this innocent journalist that they really don't give a shit about um, to frame Robert Tellis for, yeah. for a murder. To get back at Robert Tellis. That, that's the work of a narcissist mind right there. That, mm -hmm. that that's those are dots that do not connect that a narcissist would connect and go, oh, yeah, that makes total, total sense. Yeah, that's that's correct, too. If you're connecting those dots and going, maybe that's true, you might be a narcissist. <laughs> and I'm being completely <laughs> honest. I have noticed this trend uh, in in people that I know to be that uh, where if you if you share with them a story that is of a narcissist that is doing shit like this, connecting dots in really fucking weird ways um, that all stem back to them. Um, you share that story with a, a healthy minded person. They're going to see it and go, that's fucked up. You share that story with a person of the same mindset that may be the, the, the subject of the story uh, that is not of the healthy mindset that's doing very narcissistic behavior. That other narcissist will hear that and understand and kind of go, well, I can kind of see it from that perspective. So it's, it's almost like they're speaking the same language. Yes. So they're fluent in narcissism. Yes. And they'll say, and, and they, it, it's really telling when they say, I can see it from that perspective because they're not usually aware that they're a narcissist. And they also are going to think that that person's not a narcissist either. It's just how some people work. It's just how some people think, which is true. But we call that narcissism. <laughs> we call those narcissists. And you know, what, and, and what we, if somebody's really good at being able to look at other perspectives, though? Yeah, I mean that that could be the case too. But it, it, it's a tell if you already suspect that person is or know that person is why they would see it from that way. It's a good point. But the thing is, stories like this, there is no seeing it from that other perspective. There just isn't. No, I, how, how do you see it from there? There's, there's connecting dots and going, okay, this is how this person is processing this. And because a plus B equals Q to them, this is why it's going this direction, but you can't truly see it from that perspective and go, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Cause there, I mean, there's nothing about this story that makes sense. Exactly. It's psychotic. It's, it's yeah. horrific. It's um, it's somebody who just couldn't deal with with having their dirty laundry out in the open. No. You know, uh, you know, a cockroach freaks out when the lights turn on. Yeah. And that's exactly who Robert Tellis was. He was a cockroach. Yeah. yeah. And the reporter turned the lights on and he turned around, and went, nope, I'm taking you out. And he, you know, probably believes he was justified in it. 
And to this well, I day, bet he does. Believe, Absolutely. it's like, well, mm-hmm. he had it coming and well, I'll take the consequences because that's what I did, but I'm never, uh, but I, I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, you know, when he says he didn't take his life, didn't kill uh, Gurman, he probably, you know, believes in some way, shape or form that that's an accurate statement. I've, I've got a family member who is a compulsive liar. I mean, to the point where he could look at the sky and go, it's, it's orange yeah. and it really isn't. Mm -hmm. but he really believes it. And those people are frightening because in their mind, they truly believe what they're saying. Yep. So they could pass a lie detector, a polygraph test because they really believe it. Uh, There's nothing about what they're seeing that says it's otherwise. Then you start to get into delusional type behaviors and things like that. If they are truly believing things like that. Yeah. But, well, and, and where do you cross? Where where do you where do you cross that line between you're fucking nuts and you're a compulsive liar? I mean, do you just not even know you're doing it anymore? And that's like, that's where you've crossed that line. Is, compulsive lying is more so a symptom of a bigger problem, right? So it, it's like if someone's a compulsive, they're not just a compulsive liar. There's not somebody who's just a compulsive liar. There's something going on deeper than that that is causing that behavior to to manifest the way it does, to present the way it does. And there's probably a lot of other things that they do too that are part of all of that. So that's probably more so indicative of some sort of a personality disorder mm-hmm. than it is just a compulsive liar. And then that's where you start like, well, what type of disorder is this? And um, and, and usually, you know, there's a lot of different pieces to different ones. Um, and it's sometimes what has the most, uh, you know, people in the boat on the specific disorder is the one that you end up getting labeled with, but it's not so much about the labeling half the time. It's about understanding, uh, okay, which boxes are they checking? Um, and, uh, what can you expect out of this person? God, that's just messed up. So yeah, tell us checks a lot of the boxes, fucking a lot of boxes. Um, and I think it has a lot to do too. Like you're asking what's the difference as well. How, how is it manifesting? Is it manifesting like right away? He looks at the sky and can tell you it's purple and like truly believe that it's purple. Or is it more so something where, you know, it, it's in, it's implied many times over and over, or they, they just keep reliving the experience over and over in their mind a certain way. And they end up kind of retraining their mind that um, reality is something different than what it actually was like in a specific situation. Yeah. It almost sounds like a trauma response. It is, you know, just a way to, to, to train your brain to only think a certain way because that protects you. So, it is. I mean, essentially that is what it is. And it, it developed for some reason. Um, and, and I mean, that's a sad part with a lot of it, you know, especially if it's something that is learned, um, you know, from a trauma response, it's probably something really shitty that happened to that person at one point in time. And because of that, um, you know, it's damaged them so much that they're hurting themselves with their behaviors. Mm-hmm. Never excuses it, but it's just kind of the sad reality and how that stuff cycles. So gives you a bit of a, a glimpse into things. And, and as you're saying that the person that I was referring to mm-hmm. was absolutely horrifically abused. Yeah. So yeah, it's, I think they've created their own reality because that is much easier to deal with yeah. than fucking reality. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to create my own purple sky yeah. because the blue sky represents something I can't deal with. Yep. So I'm going to create my own. Yeah. And it's a, a muscle that's been exercised so much. It's so easy to do because they had to survive. Yeah. And that's really what it comes down to. All right. There you go. German's going away for 28 years, at least. That'll make him, well, he's 40. What is he now? 47. Mm-hmm. So it'll put him at what? 47 plus 28. I'm not good at math. You want me to do math? You didn't tell me I'd have to do math in this job. This 40s. Is, people are screaming this right now. I know. Uh, 75, it would be 75. 75 years old. Well, can you collect Social Security when you're in prison? I don't. How does that work? Does that go to your like canteen or something? <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. Um, I don't either. But uh, he'll be enjoying prison food till at least, 
at least 75. You're neck deep in a dark, twisted tale. And just as the tension peaks, bam, a commercial about some miracle diet pill breaks the spell. It's like finding a fly in your soup after the first bite. But here's the fix. True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. You get to enjoy your crime stories without the junk, add free episodes, extended interviews that go beyond the surface, and early access to all the gruesome details. It's like swapping out a can of cheap beer for a glass of fine whiskey. So search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and keep the darkness flowing uninterrupted. 